Hey guys, new video, a review on this game, uh, Ninja Gaiden Black. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm pretty sure Ninja Gaiden. Uh, it's not Ninja Gaiden, which is how I usually, I, how I used to pronounce it. Apparently I was, I was saying it wrong the whole time and it's something I got to get used to. Um, but, uh, forgive me if I, if I pronounce it wrong in this video, cause I'm so used to saying it wrong. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this is one of those games that I, I've loved. Uh, it's it's one of those games that I played back on the original Xbox, and it's always been my favorite character action game of all time. And I've I've held the opinion that no other game uh, is this game outclasses all other uh, character action games. And playing this again, unfortunately, I don't uh, hold that opinion any longer. I do think uh, there were a few games that have come out afterwards that have kind of have bested this game as far as character action games go. Uh, notably Bayonetta and especially Bayonetta 2. Uh, but uh, this game is still fun. I think this game is held up fairly nicely. Uh, there are some aspects to it uh, that really drove me nuts and I've completely lost any semblance of skill that I've had uh, with this game. I was actually quite good at this game back when it came out because I played the demo over and over again. But holy shit, was, did this game kick my ass this time around. Jesus, man. Like, this is a fucking hard game. It's almost, it's honestly almost a little too hard. And there's some uh, parts of the difficulty that I'll, I'll talk about that kind of drove me crazy. But uh, yeah, overall, I think if you like the genre, this still holds up and it's worth playing. I never did actually play uh, this version before or the uh, Ninja, Gaiden, uh, Ninja Gaiden Black on the uh, original Xbox, so some of this was a little bit new to me. Uh, so yeah, let's let's talk about the story first, which I'm not going to go into details here because the story in this game is garbage, like a, a steaming pile of garbage. Like it is a terrible. I I always remembered it being bad, but holy crap, it's it's really bad. Uh, yeah, uh, Ryu Hayabusa, that's your main character. Uh, your village in the beginning is attacked. And uh, apparently it's the Holy Vigoran Empire that's done this. So you travel to the city of Tyron uh, to kind of take on the Empire for, uh, you know, killing your, killing your village, basically. There's a few twists here and there, uh, but it's, it's, it's not very interesting. And you, you, can, you can see who the main bad guy is for this game coming from a mile away. In fact, within the first hour of this game, yeah, uh, it's so obvious. Uh, just like who like the main villain is in this game. I, I actually I found it kind of hilarious uh, because of some of the dialogue, and the dialogue is really cheesy in this game too. Uh, now the game doesn't really have a, a huge story focus. This is definitely a game that's more focused on gameplay, so it's not a big deal to me. Uh, you know the story is crappy, but it it really wasn't. Uh, it, it didn't really bother me all that much because there's not that many cutscenes. And it's just you know it's a gameplay game. You're you're playing this game for the action, not for the not for the really lousy story. Uh, but yeah, that's all I'm gonna be all I'm basically gonna say about the story because it, it's really the gameplay here that that's quite good. Now, okay, so gameplay wise, I've always actually considered this game to have the best level design in any character action game. And uh, there's some games that come close. I think the the first God of War game actually had pretty good level design. I didn't play any of the other God of War games though, so t uh, tell me if if those games were better in the, in this regard. But uh, I, I I like I, I still like the the level design here. I think it's quite good. Where the first three levels are your kind of linear uh, levels, where you have to like like the first level you're you're in you're like kind of like a a temple type level. Uh, but the third level, you're on like an airship, and there's different like corridors and rooms, and you got to find keys for different rooms and stuff like that. But once you actually reach the main city in this game, uh, that's when the level design gets a little more interesting. Where the game is still set up uh, with chapters, like chapter one, two. I think there's like 19 in the game, and it's fairly like the progression is fairly linear, but you actually end up uh, backtracking through areas of the city that you've been to. So like you'll f unlock shortcuts actually. Uh, that kind of uh, interconnect, like the city interconnects uh, into in, in some interesting ways where there'll be like an aqueducts uh, level, like underneath the city, and that kind of connects to the city in certain in certain areas, and you'll you'll basically go through the game where you'll see this area of the city that's like locked away or whatever, and you are you're, but there's like there might be an item there that you that you can see but you can't get, and then like a few chapters later, you'll find yourself coming from that part of the 
from the level and you'll be able to get the item and then it's like it's it's interesting like that right it, it kind of reminds me a little of like uh dark souls with the with its internet interconnected level design obviously this is nowhere near the level of, of the souls games but you know they at least tried right and there's actually some light puzzle solving elements in this game too and the first time i played this i didn't uh I didn't really. It didn't really occur to me how similar this game is to Zelda in a lot of ways. I ha I gotta. I gotta say, there's no way that uh, the designers were not influenced by Zelda in it, like because like some of the level design in this is reminiscent of Ocarina of Time, uh, especially the Aqueducts level, and especially later when there's like an ice and fire cavern. Uh, it's I don't know it's you know it's it's fairly simplistic like the puzzles aren't anything complex like in, a, in like in a Zelda game but you know at least they tried uh, they tried to keep things a little interesting the environments are fairly varied even though you're primarily in the same city for most of the game uh, so yeah like I, I think it's that the level of design is a step above uh, other games of this type like Devil May Cry I, I feel. Level My Cry has fairly decent level design as well, but I feel like this game's a little better actually in that in, in that regard, especially when you compare it to like Devil May Cry 2. Although I liked the first Devil May Cry where you were in like one location the entire game. Uh, and actually Devil May Cry 3 a little bit as well, but yeah, now the actual action itself still holds up quite well. It's it doesn't like there's not as much move and weapon variety as there is in say Bayonetta. There's only a few different weapons. Uh, some were added for this Sigma version of the game. Uh, some are actually pretty cool weapons, like a I, I, like a like a, a double dual katanas kind of, which was one of my favorite weapons actually. I really enjoyed using those. And depending on the weapon you equip, uh, your move set changes. But uh, I, I kind of stuck with uh, the good old reliable dragon sword. I, I think that's still my favorite weapon in the game. And uh, that, that, like, the, the flying swallow move is this move in this game that uh, I, oh, I kind of relied on this a little too much uh, during this playthrough and my first, where you kind of jump towards an enemy and press Y, and you do, like, kind of like a mid-air slash towards the enemy. And you can cut off their heads really easily this way, and, and you can basically dispatch a bunch of enemies easily this way. And it's kind of, it's a little cheap against some bosses as well. For instance, the final boss in this game is actually extremely easy because you can just spam the Flying Swallow and then he dies, like, like super quick. However, the two bosses you fight before the final boss, you have, like, a, a, a boss gauntlet of sorts where you fight two bosses in a row. Those bosses were extremely difficult. It took me a lot of tries. But, uh, yeah, the combat is very satisfying. It's fast and it, it's fun. Uh, you know, it's, it's fun learning all these combos and taking on all the different types of enemies. And some enemies are pretty brutal. Like, first time I came across the enemies that threw, like, the fire, uh, I, I think, shurikens at you. They, they kind of stick in you and you, they explode. Uh, those enemies, when I first encountered them, they killed me, like, non-stop. It took me a while to learn their moves. And this game, basically, the combat, there's a lot of, uh, kind of, uh, t you, have, you have to learn enemies' tells for when they're going to do certain moves, especially the bosses. The bosses overall, I'm kind of mixed on though. Some of them I really hated, like some were really irritating, and some were really fun. Uh, but most of them were challenging in, a, in, a, in I think, a, a fair way. Now, one of the bosses that everyone always complained about, or, well, they didn't really complain about it, but they thought it was really hard back when this game came, came out originally, was Alma. And she's in, like, Chapter 7 or something like that. And the first time I played through this game, I beat her first try. Like, it was, I remember, you know, like, why did people think she was hard? This time, however, yeah, she kicked my ass a, a lot. Uh, she's actually kind of annoying. However, her second form, you fight her again later in the game. That form I thought was way harder because there's only a, a certain amount of time where you can actually get in attacks on her, and it was <laughs> it was very annoying. Like I, I died a bunch. In fact, this game I got a game I got game overs nonstop in this game. And that was on the normal difficulty, and there are healing items that you can use that you can find in the environments, and I had to rely on these healing items constantly. Because basically killing enemies gives you essence, and with essence you can uh, go to shops and upgrade your weapons and buy healing items, as well as uh, accessories that you can equip. Uh, so yeah, I had to constantly use my essence to buy items for pretty much every boss in this game. Uh, it, it was pretty crazy. Like the, the, this game is fucking hard, man. Like I, <laughs> it's especially hard when you've come back when you come back to it after all these years. And I was definitely a rusty. Um, other than your uh, melee weapons, there's a uh, nimpo, which is kind of like magic. Uh, there's uh, all sorts of different magic powers you can equip. 
and you use it by pressing a triangle and circle at the same time. And uh, there'll be like a fire one where you'll like shoot a fireball out. And you have to like, it's got like the shitty six axis stuff where to, you have to charge up your Nimpo by shaking the controller, which that, that I hated. Uh, that's an addition to this, this version of the game that's pretty lame. Uh, but Nimpo is not all that useful actually. There, there was a couple bosses that I found it helped, but a lot of bosses will just dodge it. Uh, so I don't know, it's, it's, it's mostly good against like a large group of enemies I, I find. But, uh, okay, so some of the annoying things about this game. This game's got some flaws. There's some things that really kind of pissed me off. For one, the camera is pretty bad. It's it's more problematic than I remembered it being. Uh, there'll be times where enemies will, like, hit you off screen and you don't even know where they are, and that's a little cheap. Uh, it can be really bad for some boss fights. Uh, Alma, in particular, the, like, the camera was actually pretty bad, and she was able to get some really cheap shots on me. It's, yeah, it's it's not great. There is camera control. You can kind of control the camera, but it's not, it, it's not, it's not great uh, by any means. So that, that was kind of annoying. Uh, another thing is the way the game handles difficulty, where you've got your standard normal mode, and you don't, go, you don't get to pick difficulty in the beginning. And basically, if you get, I think it's three game overs, if you get three game overs, they immediately uh, let you know that, hey, do you want to drop it down to easy mode or, or whatever, right? And they do this every third time you get a game over. So I was I was always seeing this screen saying, why don't you want it? Do you want to change? Yes or no? And it's highlighted to, to yes every time. So every third game over, you have to go to the no, select that, then and that will say like continue, yes or no. Then you go yes. Then you have to load again. And it it's so irritating. Like especially considering how difficult this game is, and for how often you're going to die to have to see that screen. I. There, there, honestly, there was times where I was tempted to just drop it down to easy mode because it was just annoying me so much. But uh, yeah, it's I don't know. I I, I think this uh, I don't know the the, the lead to, to developer on this. I, I I can't pronounce his first name, but Itagaki. Uh, I feel like his attitude towards uh, difficulty is a little off-putting. I, I guess you would say. I, I really don't know why they did that for easy mode. I would have just done it so when you start the game, you could choose normal mode. Or ninja dog mode, like I don't know. It, that that was really annoying to me. Uh, but other than that, uh, yeah. The the other thing I didn't like about the game were the Rachel chapters. Uh, in the original game, you didn't play as Rachel, which is a character you meet uh, in the story. But in this game, there's three chapters where you play as her, and she's really slow. She doesn't have the acrobatic moves that uh, Ryu has, and she has this warhammer weapon that's really slow. And she's just not fun to play as, like, at all. Luckily, those chapters that you play with her in are, are pretty short, and there's only three of them, but any time I got to one of those chapters, I was like, oh, this sucks, because it, it, it's, yeah, the difference in, in play style, I just, I don't know, some people might find it a little, maybe, a re refreshing, maybe, but uh, for me, it was just kind of irritating. Uh, but like I mentioned before, yeah, acrobatics. Uh, there's also some platforming in this game, which that can be a bit sketchy as well. The the fire cavern level, there's like lava that you have to jump over, and that like that's where the controls kind of really hinder the game a little bit in those kind of platforming sections, especially when you combine the terrible camera. So yeah, the game's got some control issues, uh, and yeah, the camera makes some of the fights feel a little unfair. Uh, and then towards the end of the game, there's like this uh, gauntlet of enemies and bosses that is just insane. Like, I don't even know how many game overs I got in this game, but I feel like it was like at least 30 plus. Uh, it, it's crazy, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I was frustrated at times, especially towards the end of the, ga end of the game when it starts getting really hard. Um, and yeah, basically you'll find some items too to kind of increase your health bar to make it bigger. Uh, one thing about this game that also bugs me are these little challenge rooms that you'll find. There's like these rooms where enemies will just constantly respawn, and, and you have to kill like a hundred of them. And if you kill a hundred of them, you'll get like an item, like a bonus. Uh, usually it's an item that will increase your maximum health. But it, it, there's no good way of knowing if the room you're in has infinite enemies or not. So I would find these rooms where enemies would spawn in, and I thought, oh, well, is this like a normal room that I just have to kill all the enemies to progress, or is this one of these bonus rooms? I have no idea. So a lot of rooms I would sit there killing enemies, and like I would kill like 30 enemies until eventually I was like, oh, okay, this is just one of those rooms. So I'm just going to skip this and move on. That I, kind of, that I found kind of annoying. I wish the game was better at telling you uh, whether one of these rooms was one of those uh, challenge rooms of sorts. But... Uh, 
Yeah, the game is actually pretty long too. I was, I it took me a while to get through it. I think it took me like 16 hours. So for a game of this type, it's actually fairly lengthy as well. Although I think the Rachel chapters definitely add to that. Um, other than the story mode, I think there's like there's like a, a mission mode that I saw that I didn't really dive into all that much. I think it's just you take on like these combat challenges there, which which that's cool if you really like the core combat in this game. And I, I love this game's use of gore, uh, blood and gore, because it, it, it makes it just satisfying when you uh, lop off an enemy's head uh, with the flying swallow attack. And it's, I don't know, it's just, it, the combat still, I think, feels good and, and, and quite satisfying, even though I don't think it's, it just doesn't have the depth that uh, Bayonetta or Bayonetta 2 does. But I, I think the level design is definitely uh, pretty damn good in this. I, the, the God of War and Devil May Cry 3 are probably the two games, I think, that give this a run for its money. And... Playing this again, I, I gotta say, I think I probably prefer Devil May Cry 3 as far as character action games go. Because, uh, yeah, I don't I don't love this as much as I used to. It's, it's you know, playing this game again, I had fun, but it's definitely, there's a few flaws that kind of held it back for me. So it's not, it's not, it's no longer one of my all-time favorite games. But, uh, yeah, if it's one of those games that you, like, like, like with me, uh, you played it back in the day and you enjoyed it. Uh, you might want to try giving it another shot, because I still think it holds up for the most part. Uh, visuals, it, it looks, you know, this was one of the best looking games on the original Xbox, and I still think it looks actually pretty good. Uh, the environments are nice, the character models are nice, it runs into 60 frames per second, uh, so everything's nice and smooth. And it actually looks better than Devil's Third, which is Itagaki's uh, game on the, on the Wii U, which is he kind of sad, actually, <laughs> that this game looks better than that, but... Uh, yeah, uh, what else? Soundtrack, surprisingly good. I remembered the soundtrack being pretty good in this game, and uh, yeah, some of the songs were, were, were really good. The song that plays in the aqueducts reminds me of the song from the Forest Temple in Ocarina of Time, uh, which again gave me the, that Zelda, those Zelda vibes, which is, which is awesome. So yeah, the soundtrack is actually quite surprising. I actually really liked it. Like, I thought it was really good. Um, but yeah, voice acting is, is fine for, for when you do hear it in the, in the few cutscenes that there are. But, um... Oh, right, okay. The one left thing, I can't believe I almost forgot this, because it's easily the worst thing about the game. Uh, and this is a gameplay thing. The, air, the bow and arrow. Fuck the bow and arrow in this game so much. Base, okay, ba so basically you have a, 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 a bow in this game, and you have to use, you have to basically use a first-person mode to, to do accurate shots. And there's a chapter in this game, I think it's like chapter 9 or something, it's the worst chapter in this game, in the entire game, it's this military base chapter, where you have a, a boss fight against a tank and a boss fight against a, chap uh, a chopper, and you have to use your, your bow and arrow with like explosive arrows to kill them. And these are the most frustrating fights because you have a shitty camera combined with them spamming attacks on you, and then you have to go into first-person mode and awkwardly shoot your arrows at these at these at this tank and this chopper. And there's no aiming reticle at all. You have to just randomly shoot and hope that you hit your targets. And there's even one part where there's like this, this watchtower with enemies on it. And you have to aim and keep shoot, shooting these enemies and explosive barrels of some sort on it. It is extremely frustrating. This entire military base chapter is hands down the worst in the game. It it almost like I almost quit. There was actually even this one part with like, these robot flying robot things that shoot lasers. Then you have to shoot, you have to kill a bunch of them with the with the bow. It was the most aggravating thing. I, I can't believe I actually almost forgot to talk about this, but um, yeah, the the bow and arrow just fucking sucks. I wish that shit was just entirely removed from the game. Like, the shurikens that you can throw, I don't mind those, some of the other, like, kind of uh, secondary weapons, but the bow, fuck the bow so much. Uh, there's also some underwater swimming. There's, like, some swimming sections in this game that are kind of annoying, too. Uh, although those weren't as bad as I remember them being. I, I remember hating those back when I played the game for the first time when I was, you know, back on the original Xbox. But, uh, yeah, the bow and arrow in this game, fuck it so much. It, it really pissed me off. But anyways, that will do it, guys. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.